is 7 o'clock. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Before doing so, I want to at least acknowledge that uh, these proceedings are being taped, obviously, by a, uh, a videotape and broadcast on TV. If there's anybody here uh, wishing to tape or uh, audio or, or videotape, they have to come to the board or come to the chair to ask. Seeing that there's none, we'll proceed. So, having said that, um, I'd like to uh, go to the first agenda item, which is a call to the order and um, ask for an acceptance of the agenda. So move. Second. Seconded by uh, Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, moving along to number two on the agenda, which happens to be the walk-in period. Are there any walk-ins this evening? Come on up to the, uh, the table here if you could identify yourself by name and also your address. Greg Fritz, 11 Mitchell Avenue. Um, some well-meaning but misguided, misguided persons at the highway department apparently are trying to kill my friends and I. I'm speaking in reference to the work that's being done on Gannett Road. I and a number of my friends in town are road cyclists and we've been squeezed out of the lane that we used to have to ride in there. And now the most recent work I see going down by, down by Hot Street is gonna be even worse. It's on a curve going downhill and it's being narrowed. Um, there's, there's, I, I don't understand this. There's been no consideration given for us. We understand that a, hide, a sidewalk's needed up through there, but they took the uh, they took the shoulder lane that we used to be able to ride safely, and this is one of the few streets in town where I could where I could ride and not feel threatened by the traffic because there was a four foot wide lane there. Um, so, Mr. Fr Mr. Fritz, yes. correct? Okay, um, I. I certainly can understand the concern you raise um, and equally um, just so that you understand the um, bike path which is what it's called or the trail that's on Gannett Road was um, noticed a number of years ago it was put out uh, public uh, open meetings excuse me Mr. Fritz let me finish please and uh, it was voted on at town meeting and um, I recognize that you know there are a lot of people concerned about their health and safety by walking just on that road alone without any type of um, a sidewalk or a bike path in this case and as far as the um, Hollett Street goes right now um, they are looking into a sidewalk federal funds for school children to be able to get to the Hadley school so I'm not trying to be dismissive to your concerns but you know the roadway is for vehicles a bicycle included to work with it so um, you know we're trying to do the best we can in trying to protect and ensure the health and safety for pedestrians that, also and I voted for that bicycle path but I had it never entered my mind that the road would be re road width would be reduced and I would be stuck in traffic like that but when I ride down that road now cars cross the yellow line to get around me and it, it, it only took me a couple of minutes to go on to the Mass uh, Department of Trans Transportation website and find that their, uh, find their project development and guidelines design guide, which they say was released in 2006. This multiple award-winning project to develop it and design guide serves as a national model for developing road and bridge projects. Look at the table of contents. Chapter 11 says shared use path and greenways. Let me read you two sentences. Uh, Mr. Fritz, I, I can't, this is a walk-in period. We only have five minutes per issue and I can't make this a, due brief. to the open meeting uh, law that these have to be noticed. So if it's not brief, I'm sorry, I'm it's gonna have to cut you off. Two sentences. Shared use paths and trails are not, this is the design guide that the state puts out. Shared use paths and trails are not a substitute for adequate on-street facilities. Shared use paths and trails are a complementary non-motorized extension to the street network and should not, not preclude shared use of streets either by regulation or design. So when somebody gets hurt out there, there will be a lawyer sitting in court holding up this document saying, why didn't you people follow this guideline? The state put it out for you. Did it went through a time well, expense uh, let, me, let, me, let me just short circuit this. Ms. Mr. Fritz, I, I dis respectfully disagree with that. All due consideration was taken into account when we deal with these issues, whether it's a trail or the, the, the roadways. You and I disagree on that point. Um, aside from that, is there anything else, Mr. Fritz, that you'd like to bring no, to the board's attention? Okay. 
Thank you very much. Mr. Murray? Yeah, I just have a, I understand we don't want to go on in this, but is what's out there right now the final, the final, final? And I just want to, because there's still cones and everything all out. And so, you know, the project is by no means completed. And I'm not making any, I'm not even implying anything, so I'm not exactly clear where you're exactly referring to. I don't want to get into it, but it's not the final, final project right now either. So, you know, and I do know that the engineers have, have put this all out and mass highways or whatever it is signed off on and all this. So, you know, all those guidelines have indeed been followed. But uh, my, that was my only question is because there, I was driving down there and I've got some people calling up saying, gee, you know, the path doesn't look so good and it doesn't, you know, work going across roads. You've got this much of a lip and all this stuff, but it's not done yet. So, you know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if that whole point might just even be premature at this point. So. It's, it's not done, and it's not just surface issues. There's, there's a lot of blind driveways down there. Uh, you, you can't get on that, you cannot get on that path and cruise on a bicycle and not be in danger of hitting kids and dogs and, and people yeah, backing out of driveways. So fine for a sidewalk, we needed it. No, yeah, I, I understand your point. We didn't need to take all that from the road. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Thank you very much. All right. Ms. Burbank. Ms. Burbine. Ann Burbine, 10 Pennycrest Road. I saw Mr. Norton yesterday and I spoke to him about a similar issue. It isn't the sidewalk that's in question. It appears that the intersection of Hollett Street and Gannett Road is being reconfigured to the point that there is now a great big huge yellow line around area that they have dug. And I attend these meetings, as you well know, and it has I don't know if that was part of the sidewalk reconfiguration or not, but the sidewalk, the pavement is in fact finished to Hollett Street. It's the intersection that at this point in time, I have to tell you, is lethal. It's absolutely lethal because you, you're churning everyone almost to a 90 degree angle onto Gannett Road and then to try to get up Gannett Road crossing to head to North Situate. There's a yellow line down the street that has pushed people coming west on Gannett Road into, almost into the bushes. So I don't know what the story is. I haven't heard anything about it. You people haven't talked about it. But it is not the sidewalk. It is the reconfiguration of Gannett and Hollett Street. That's the issue. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Moving on to the uh, next agenda item number three, which is a discussion vote for outdoor entertainment permit for the Situate Harbor Yacht Club. And um, is there a representative for? Come on up, come on up. Could you please is, uh, identify your name and address, please? Um, Virginia Ayers, 10 Crescent Ave. Yes. And we're Looks like you're looking for a DJ for July 23rd from 7 p.m. till 11 p.m. in the pool area of the Yacht Club. Yes. And, um, you know, obviously I think you're, you're, the organization was here the last time. This is a one-time event. You've done it before. There one, are no complaints by neighbors. One-time event. I think this is our sixth or seventh year, and we've had no complaints from the neighbors. Motion, Mr. Chairman. Please. I uh, move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to the Citroen Harbor Yacht Club, 84 Jericho Road. For a disc jockey playing amplified music on Friday, July 23rd, 2010, from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. at the pool area, applicant must notify immediate neighbors of this event. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you very much. Good luck. Moving on to agenda item number four. It's a discussion <coughs> vote for a special event permit. It's the Situate Harbor Recycle Regatta. And on behalf of the applicant, I believe is uh, Jennifer McCormick. Vitali and I'm Jamie sorry, Noonan. Mr. Noonan. Thank you. Thank you. And um, briefly, can you just, this is the first time this event's been held, right? Yes, yeah. Ed Fishon, our sailing director, kind of came up with this fun idea to put together a little regatta for the kids that are in the sailing program. It will be the first annual, the Situate Boat Works down there has offered to co sponsor it along with TK O'Malley's. Um, it would be limited to 25 boats, just so we have a measurable number, Saturday morning, July 24th, in the harbor, starting at 8.30. Any 
Any questions from the board? I was Mr. just going to say, Jen Jennifer, can you just describe a little bit about it? You know, I know yes. all about it, but for the people that don't, it's pretty neat. Yeah, so it's a recyclable regatta, so all of the material that the boats are made out of have to be made out of recyclable material. And um, it's limited to four kids per boat. They can't use anything that used to be a floatable device, so in, they can't be more than one gallon jugs. Wait, wait a minute, you, you mean you have to have a gallon jug? Very small okay. children. Yeah. Interesting. And it's no motors. No motors. It's all motors. No motors. And the, and the water is, like if I'm not mistaken, it's <laughs> something, it's five to six feet. Is that the depth of the, uh, the water area? Where they're doing this? No. If they end up sinking? No, it'll be in the harbor. <laughs> <laughs> they'll all have life jackets. Yes, they all have life jackets. are part of the sailing program. Fair enough. And then your, your, your materials will, um, DPW or someone will be there to take the recyclables down, possibly the transfer station, so it stays in the yep, they'll recyclable be stream. to have everything cleaned out of the harbor and they'll be piled and we'll coordinate with DPW. Should be interesting. Should be fun. Oh, yes, yep. We've been in coordination with the Harbor Master's Office and okay. Waterways as well. We've been in front of Waterways. No, it's good because the checklist here didn't mention Harbor Master's Office. I just wanted to make sure. Oh, yeah. Cool. Motion? Please. Move the board of select and vote to grant a special events permit to the Situate Recreation Department for the Situate Harbor Recycle Regatta on Saturday, July 24th, 2010 from 8 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. The regatta will take place on Situate Harbor and at the Situate Maritime Center. This permit is granted per all conditions set forth by the town departments. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Uh, discussion? Saying none. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Good luck. Thank you. Good Very luck. Much. All right, moving on to agenda item number five. <clears throat> it's a discussion mm -hmm. vote on the health insurance rate saver plan. And is Ms. Lopardo? Oh, if you'd be so kind to come down. Just briefly explain to the board what you're seeking. Um, per the memo that I had sent to all of you, this is a housekeeping item um, that the town already offers a variety of plans, Network Blue, um, uh, Blue Cross products and Harvard Pilgrim plans and such. And we had the option a year ago to offer a rate saver plan and it was advised by the, um, at that time, Plymouth Community Health Group, now Mayflower Health Group, to offer something that would be comparable to the GIC plan. There were some threats out there that our local aid could be cut if we didn't offer something that was a little bit more affordable. So we did offer one rate saver plan last year. We had one participant in it. This year, we decided to offer both in case anyone had any interest in it. Um, I think we might have won on that plan, but we didn't realize that the selectmen was supposed to vote to approve it as um, an option for our employees and retirees. So that's why it's a housekeeping item. I need you to approve those options. Any questions from the board? Mr. Vignani. Um, I didn't see any rates in the literature you gave us. No, the rates were, I didn't bring any of that information. The rates were all on the options that were offered to the people during the open enrollment period back in May. Um, it's a little bit cheaper, not a whole lot cheaper than the other plans that we offer. I could get that for you if you'd like. I could email it to you. So now, well, there's two new ones that we're going to be offering, and that goes with two, is there four options now? Is that? Um, the, um, there's an HMO plan. Um, uh, it's a Blue Cross pro product, and it's, there's a PPO plan, and then there's the Rate Saver plan, all Blue Cross products. Uh, aside from that, there's the Harvard Pilgrim um, HMO plan, and then the um, Harvard Pilgrim Rate Saver plan. Right, and these two are fall into the low. Uh, what did you call yeah, it? The rate Saver. Rate plan, Saver they plan. Them. Yeah, right. they hit higher copays. Um, <coughs> Since the regular plans that we offer, the HMOs, they have increased um, the co-pays. People aren't really attracted to them, but we did offer them, so. Right, and uh, but these rates are a little bit lower than the other options that they have, but the bit. deductibles are the big variable in, across yeah. the board. and plans. now it's not even that much of a variable because the HMO plans have a higher copay now, so. Right, and, but that's all contractual, right? That what people pay for the deductibles, is that? in their union contract, or is that based on the plan? It's based on the plan from um, now Mayflower Municipal Health Group. There was a vote 
a um, couple of months ago when they increased back in April when they increased the co-pays. Majority one. Great. Thank you. Mo motion, Mr. Chairman. Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote uh, that the Town of Situate offer two rate saver health insurance plans to employees, Network Blue Rate Saver and Harvard Pilgrim Health Care Rate Saver. Second. Seconded by Mr. Uh, Murray. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Moving on to agenda item number six, um, which is a discussion vote for interfund advanced borrowing. Of course, Ms. Lopardo, you're representing this. Um, these are some items where the departments need the money um, sooner rather than later. They will wait until the turn of the fiscal year. I plan to do a sizable borrowing soon. There are some um, pretty big DPW plans, some water plans, some sewer projects. Um, this is um, just three items. One is the $40,000 that was voted as part of the capital plan in the April annual town meeting. Um, so the fire chief can get the command vehicle. Um, the other two, um, one is part of an original authorization that was for 357,000. I'd only borrowed 345. That's what they needed. Now Kevin needs the uh, additional 12,000 to complete the project. In addition to that, um, there was a new authorization for 175,000 on that sewer project for Roses Lane. So Kevin needs that as well. So he's going to spend it fairly quickly um, when um, I do the formal borrowing a short-term borrowing these will be cleaned up this is just really a, a, a book entry um, item that I notify the DOR if you approve it that we're borrowing it against ourselves and then once I borrow I get the real cash in and then we clean these up the town accountant signs off and we report it to the DOR Questions from the board. So, if we can just go through the dollar amount. So, the first one's only twelve thousand dollars. Correct. That's the difference between the three right. fifty-seven and three right. forty-five. These forms are just a little. And the last one is one hundred and seventy-five thousand. That's the entire authorization. And then the forty thousand for the vehicle. Right. That's the capital. Amount. And this is strictly a timing. We're in the we're in the right fiscal year. You just haven't done the short-term borrowing yet. Right. They had some RFPs on some of the big projects that DPW is working on. So Kevin's going to be giving me some cash flows, and we're going to sit down and. And then I'll do a larger borrowing and combine all of these in with the other projects. Right, as a band. As a band, short-term bond anticipation. Mr. Murray. So you need to borrow the money earlier than anticipated. So there's going to be, is that correct? So there's going to be an increased, um, increased interest than we had planned, higher exactly. than we planned? It's, it's a tool that's available um, through the DOR. Um, because I'm not ready to do the larger borrowing, so okay. I don't want to borrow money until the departments are ready to spend it. Sure. So when it's some smaller amounts, it, it doesn't cost us any money, and um, it's easier for me. I, I've been doing them yeah. frequently since I have come here. Um, so it's essentially cost new. It's cost neutral. We're borrowing it from affecting. ourselves. Yeah. We're borrowing from ourselves, right? The interest that we're getting in the bank is got it. Practically, I'm nothing. all set. <clears throat> got it. So yep. we, we know we, we said that we were going to buy that money with a loan. Yep. But we're going to use our own money to buy it sooner than we do the loan. Understood. Got it. Right. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Jane. Further Thank questions? You. Motion for June. Please. Move the board of select to vote uh, to support. It to fund advanced borrowing for three projects as recommended by the treasurer collector, one being Roses Lane, sewer extension, two fire command vehicle, and th three Roses Lane additional sewer extension. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion from the board, from the audience. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank Jane, thank you very much. All right. Moving on to uh, agenda item number seven. It's a discussion vote on the Hawker Peddler's License, and we have a number of them this evening. I'd like to first start with Martin and Demena. I think it's Drew Martin and Matt Demena. They are not here. What's that? Did I? Um, the AC went off, and I think we had a manual Excuse me. Uh -huh. Just so those people, it's a little hot in here. Mr. Martin, 
Mr. Demena here. All right, moving on to the next applicant. I'd like to see is uh, Leslie Fields here doing business as iFocus. Oh. Ms. Drafton, yes. I'm representing Leslie. Uh, she is actually up in Vermont. It's um, a good place to be. <laughs> in a workshop. Um, she's a situate resident, left situate, studied overseas, lived overseas, does wonderful, wonderful artwork uh, called solar plate etching, whereby she's taking an image, putting it right on a polymer form, etching into it. Most of her subjects are situate related. Uh, she has a studio up at the Ellis Estates member of the North River Arts Association, Situate Arts Association, and the Plymouth Artist Guild. Wonderful, wonderful lady, wonderful work, and just a great feeling for the town. We think that she would be a wonderful addition to the market. Yeah, sure, I was just going to say, not that I'm disappointed not to meet the other applicants. I was actually <laughs> looking forward to ask her and see if she had any. I was curious to see what it looked like. Having said that, uh, yes. Move the Board of Select and vote to grant the Hawkins Peddler's license to Leslie W. Fields, D DBA, I Focus, 709 Country Way, Situate Mass, to sell solar plate etching, mono printing, and photography at the North Situate Town Owned Commuter Rail parking lot in front of the WPA building from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Wednesdays until October 31st, 2010. This license is a temporary <coughs> waiver of the 15-minute rule selectman policy 43-99. Second. Seconded by Mr. Murray. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Very gentlemen. Good. Thank you. Um, John, what happened to number two? Did we jump over number two or? Yeah, we did actually. He's not here, so. Um, number two's not here either? Right. Okay, so. great. Moving on to, um, to dine for. Is Paula Kaufman here? <sighs> Ms. Kaufman. You're looking for a hawker's uh, peddler's uh, permit. It looks like Middle Eastern Foods. I think yep. you've been on before. <coughs> we haven't seen you. So uh, just briefly, what are you looking to do? Um, so we have my friend and I own a store in Hull. It's a Mediterranean takeout store. And we do a farmer's market in Hingham. And we sell hummus and tabbouleh and marinated feta and olives and all, all kinds of Mediterranean foods. And um, we do it right out of our store which we have a license in Hull, and we'd like to bring our things to Situate. I have no questions. Any other questions? I just had dinner, but you made me hungry with that description. <laughs> is it refrigerated? Is it fresh, or is it? We make everything fresh, yeah. and then we bring it in coolers. Oh, you do? Yeah. We have serve safe licenses and everything, so we know how to keep everything fresh and cold um, so that, you know, when we sell it, it everything is safe. Do, yeah. do they have to go to the health? Health. Yes. So all that's great. Do you have lemogen? Yes, we do. Great. Okay. Motion. Motion, please. It's four, right? Yes. <coughs> Move the water segment vote to grant a Harkis Peddler's license to Paul, Paula Kaufman doing business as to dine for 520 Nantasket Avenue in Hull to sell Middle Eastern foods such as hummus, tapoli? Is that what you call it? Tapoli. Feta, olives, etc. At the North Situate <laughs> Town owned commuter rail parking lot. Is there a second? I wasn't done, but that's oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's I all apologize. right. <laughs> second. Thank you. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Thank you. You. Good luck. You owe me one, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Is Susan Cameron here? It's Cameron, it looks like you're looking to um, also sell at the market. Yes. Got a Hawker's Peddler's License yes. uh, for looks like some form of like supplements it for is. juice it's and juice plus, plus. which okay. is 17 fruits and vegetables in capsule form and gummy form for children and adults who can't take capsules so i don't actually sell it i take orders there because i don't actually um, make the product i represent the product and it comes directly from the manufacturer questions from the board do you have one in the gummies or no i just i brought <laughs> no I handouts I do have handouts if you'd like them. Yeah, if you want to leave one, I'll, I'll look at it afterwards. Yeah. Great. Gummies would have been good, but that's the gummy, okay. I'm sorry if I it's thought okay. bribery would work. No, would no, it doesn't work here. It does oh, not work right. here. We don't like that word. <laughs> I guess that's a bad one, isn't it? Politically <laughs> <Sample>. <laughs> Motion? But 
But please. samples are available at the market. <laughs> Move the board of selectmen vote to grant a hawker peddler license to Susan Cameron, 294 Jerusalem Road, Cohasset, Mass, to sell Juice Plus supplements at the North Situate town-owned commuter rail parking lot in front of the WPA building from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Wednesdays until October 31st, 2010. This license has a temporary waiver of the 15-minute rule, selectmen's policy 4399. License is subject to board of health approval. Second. Sir. Seconded by Mr. Vignotti. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Good luck. Moving on to the final one, uh, baking with joy. Come on up. Could you identify yourself? Miss, is it Linda Davis? Yes. And you reside at 108 Sunrise Drive in Weymouth? Yes. Correct. Okay. And we have What's a the joy of baking that you look to do? <laughs> we um, <laughs> reside out of Weymouth. We have a residential kitchen. We make tea breads, cakes, cookies, granola, bar cookies. I should have brought samples. I'm sorry. It's enough for me to hear. That's, that's <laughs> And we'd like to be in the Situate Farmers Market. Other questions from the board? Seeing none. Motion. motion, please. Move the board of selectmen vote to grant the Hawker Pedal license to Susan Cameron, three, 294 Jerusalem Road. Nope. Second. Nope. Nope. We're on next one. <laughs> Six. Move the board of selectmen vote to grant the Hawker Pedal license to Linda Davis DBA uh, Baking with Joy, 108 Sunrise Drive, Weymouth, Mass. to sell baked goods at the North Situate Town owned commuter parking lot. In front of the WPA building from 3 to 7 on Wednesdays until October 31st, 2010. This license has a temporary waiver of the 15 minute rule selectors policy 4399. The license is subject to the Board of Health approval. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Murray. A discussion. Okay. Mr. No, no, just, just one one quick question. And it was probably to Angel. Mm. How, do, how are you getting so many vendors? It, how, how's this working? Is it uh, word of mouth? Or, you know, situates a place to be. I realize that. I, you know, that's it's exciting. It's good. Just, it's kind of good. It's great. Good. Good. Great. Glad to hear it. This is good stuff too. This 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 gamut of stuff that we just approved is all very appropriate. I think it's a good job. Yeah, it's really good. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Good luck. Come on down. We give samples. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Where are Selectman's veg? We'll buy. Okay. I'll buy. Joe's I'll been there. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to agenda item number eight. It's a discussion vote. Emergency sewer tie-in for 25 Park Ave. On behalf of the applicant, it's the Board of Health, Mr. Lynch. It's good to Thank see you. Me. Thank you all. Thank you for reappointing me. Too. Um, You're welcome. Well earned. <laughs> Pleasure is ours. Uh, this one's a little bit different than some of the other ones that, that, that we've had. These are 24-year residents of the town who had in the home significant uh, lead, asbestos, and mold issues and, and basically had to demo uh, the house. Uh, it's a 29,000 square foot lot, three bedroom. Uh, under the old system that they had, um, it backed up into, into the laundry. Um, the house has been demoed, so we, we, the Board of Health, don't have our usual pictures like, like of the backups and things like that because of that. But the owner is here uh, to tell you about that if anybody wants to ask. Uh, the Title V was done, three observation holes were, were dug, and um, the lot uh, failed to perk. So, um, the alternative is, is the alternative of either a tight tank or a connection. Now, this one's also a little interesting in that um, there's uh, three abutters to this property that are already connected to the sewer. There are two easements already in place across this property in order so that those abutters can connect to the sewer. Uh, in addition, um, uh, at least according to the owner and, and from the drawings that I've seen, um, Mr. Antonellis, when they were putting in the pipes, put in the appropriate stub uh, and pipe so that this house could be connected um, when, when the time came. Um, so there's gonna, not going to be any need to dig up the street uh, as we've had in some of these other situations. The, the connection is already right there on the owner's property. Um, that's pretty much it. Questions from the board? So one quick question. You said they demolished the house. What size house did, did they build a comparable house on the lot? It's, it's nothing been built. Oh, now. there's nothing there. So you're, right. and are you building a comparable size? Three bedroom, it'll be another three bedroom. Quick. Other questions? 
questions? Ms. Ms. Yes, Tricia. Frank, did uh, the DPW review this request at all before it became for the Board of Health? I don't know. No, there was no, technically there's no plan to tie in. It's not like you have to get a, a design plan to tie in because the, the stubs are already on the lot. But is this Mr. St. James? Uh, St. James. A spaghetti line and not an existing sewer main of the town, which is a little different since we're trying to minimize any connections to spaghetti lines in the town. So I'd ask in the future that any connections be run by the DPW because, again, we really is there an opportunity for that house to connect directly into the main line? Uh, well, maybe go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, spath, spath um, the only way to do that is to, to he, has he has permission from the abutters to tie into either one of their lines. Spaghetti that lines? Was, I understand yeah, that. that. There's spaghetti the lines. My question is, is there an opportunity for that home to tie directly into the main line with of our sewer with, with another without line. another spaghetti line? No. So, no. It, so it couldn't happen unless there's a spaghetti line. Right. What? And I, I didn't understand the part about the tight tank. Is there one there already or no. is considered? No. The option is, is either to put in a tight, tight tank or to connect. Right. And so the um, connection was determined in lieu of the tight tank. Right. Even though the entire house was demolished and rebuilt, it wouldn't have been an opportune time to put a tight tank in. Well, I, if nothing's been rebuilt, that you could put a tight tank in anywhere by digging a hole. Um, that, that's fine. Yeah. So, I mean, and this is just a follow-up to our other discussion that the, the intent of the town going forward is to reduce the frequency and continuance of spaghetti lines in town. And so, and if at all possible, we will want to increase them. In this case, where they have the stub and he has the easements, I totally understand why you approved this. But I think going forward, we need to work closely with the DPW in minimizing that. Just, you know, the, we've discussed this in the Board of Health over a number of years, and I know Jennifer has, has discussed this with you and came up with the idea of convening a, um, a meeting or a or, a group um, because I've been doing this for a long time now and the problem really is is that there's not enough capacity in the existing plant and so what we need to do is to address that reality and try to figure out what are we going to do about the people in the rest of the town um, and, and if there are any alternatives for them to connect to some sort of sewer system I, I want to follow up on that in a second. I know uh, Mr. Harris and Mr. Murray have questions. Mr. Harris. Go, go with Rick first. That's fine. Mr. Murray. Sure. Yep. I don't see this as a capacity issue because it's going to go through a spaghetti line, but I, I don't understand why, if there's a stub there, you don't just go right into the stub. They because are. They, are. they would. That's what they're going to do. The stub's on the spaghetti line. That was my question. Oh, the oh, stub sorry. is on yeah. the spaghetti yeah. line. No, I thought I the thought stub was right. into the... Yeah. Yeah. No, stubs they, they have an easement going from the street over to the two properties, it looks like, on either side of this property. And so the stub is actually on his property. It's a spaghetti line. Spaghetti so line what they're going to do is tie into that stub on his property. So it's a really quick fix for him. So I can understand that. But I, I think the larger issue, because we were here before, and I forgot what month, but um, back yeah. in March or something. Right. And maybe right. we should think about doing that as, as having a meeting to discuss going forward policy about these spaghetti lines, how do we eradicate them, because I, I do understand you're trying to avoid that. Now, this is already in existence, so we're not creating one. But in essence, we're not doing, we're not cleaning up the mess either. We're kind of complicating it. So maybe we should think about having a joint meeting at some point to kind of think of going forward policies, I think be an which idea. would give direction to the Board of Health. Is none of them uh, not the Board of Health. The committee, and so that we're all on the same page. So that, not that we're not, but it just I think it would make it a, lot, a little easier for, for your job, so to speak. Mr. Norton. Uh, the, what's the cost now of the tie-in for this type of thing? The cost. The expense to the? To the, to the homeowner. The homeowner. The fee? Yeah. What is it? Is it Okay, that's my question. Okay. So prior, you weren't you weren't on the sewer prior to this. You had you had your own tank, right? So that's good. So it's just like a better. Yeah. How many other areas, um, other homes in this area on the sewer, or are they all separate? No, they're all they're all on the sewer. Matter of fact, the sewer line comes up. I'm trying to think of the road that the Merritt Lane. Road. The main right there, and all those are tied into the Merritt Road system. They're all 
tied in the this is one of the last septics. Park, Park Ave does not have any sewer down it. Obviously, it doesn't because this doesn't. But I'm saying Park Ave doesn't. Does um, I was going to say Maple Ave and Turner Road has it. Are you? I hate to ask that. I, not to hate. I need to know your name and address. I'm, it's one of the owners. Thank you. Okay. So there's ledge. There might have been problems when they're doing it. I only asked that because obviously the surrounding area was sewered, but that's why I'm curious why Park Ave wasn't. It's probably. Okay. Further questions? Mr. Harris. Just the last. Uh, <coughs> when Jennifer, correct me if I'm mistaken, before this is done and approved by DEP, it has to get approved by DPW, doesn't it? Does, or does it go to DP, DEP and then to DPW for final approval for the tie-in? They only approve the upgrades. They approve the uh, sewer extension. I realize. All right, but not, if you can. Not the individual all right, what about an innovative system like you do? Then they. they or an system, depending. Right. It, it exceeds the local upgrade approval. Or the innovative uh, additional approval, then it has to go to DPW. All right. All right, okay. But um, in streamlining the program, one of the things that DP has dropped is tight tank approval. So that stays here. Okay. All right, thank you. Further questions? Any questions from the audience? Motion? Motion, please. Move the board slightly vote to grant an emergency sewer tie-in for 25 Park Ave, situate Mass. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion from the board. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against? It's unanimous. Thank Congratulations. You. Good luck. All right, moving on to the next agenda item. It's uh, award contracts. There are two. Water main project. Mr. Cafferty. We recently went out uh, for bid for two water projects. One was for the replacement of the water line on Tilden Road in Stockbridge. Um, this was approved in the 2009 town meeting, Article 4, Items K and I. Um, the value was 1.3 that was approved. We put it out to bid, and we received a, um, quite a few bids on that. I think there were like 27. <coughs> and our low bid was 1.290. 922 uh, to CNC construction out of Dennis, Mass. And we're requesting that the Board of Selectmen award the contract for the cleaning and lining of uh, the replacement of the water line on Tilden Road and Stockbridge to CNC construction from Dennis, Mass for 1.29922. Questions from the board, Mr. Harris. Just a comment and a question, Kevin. You must have been pleased to see all these, and I recognize a lot of names, qualified bidders, really, and I highlight them and just show Joe how tight they were on a, you know, fairly good-sized project. Will you be overseeing the project or something like this? Do we have a clerk of the works, or are you um, can you do that, Kevin? It's going to vary. We're we're looking at options on that. We may do it. Normally in the past what we had done is um, we had one of our engineers watch it. We've had two of them retire now. They haven't been replaced yet. So um, we may wind up looking outside sources to watch the project as it goes. Would it be under the and, and under that 1.29? It would be. It would be. That, that's in other words, the money to pay for that individual come from that appropriation? Come from that appropriation. That's part of the reason we broke it down. Um, we have the $750,000 appropriation, the $595,000, and um, is beyond that we have the $1.3 for the general water fund uh, for replacement. So if we had to dip into that for um, either change orders or anything additional we had, we would have the funding. Further questions? Uh, just one quick comment. I, I think this just shows how good we are estimating these projects. Um, you know, we're getting a lot of bids, like Sean mentioned, and we're we're coming under our number, which is great. Well, hopefully, we don't find any. You know, once you dig in the road, you never can't tell what you're going to find. Unfortunately, um, 
but yeah, it's still that's pretty good so far. We were happy with those bids and the amount of uh, people we got out there looking at the work. Mr. Harris, and and when do you think? Right after we award yeah, this, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna write a letter to the contractor telling him to get his bonds and everything else, and I'd like to get started as soon as he can get um, all his bonds in and we can get going. Great. Uh, we'll get a pre-construction meeting started because um, it, as I, I kind of outlined in here, what we go by is we had a study done with um, on the water system in 2001, um, and there were some suggestions that should be made at, at that point of um, how to improve our water system. This this area here, um, actually both areas, Country Way were areas that should, you know, they suggest strongly that are addressed right away. So we're looking to get that um, into action. It, and we may find, um, we may find some odd things out there um, where it did go in so long ago. You, you can't tell how they did the construction. We're, we're making assumptions um, from where it was done about 90 years ago. Further questions? Questions from the audience? Entertain <coughs> a motion? Motion. Please. Will the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for the water main improvements to Tilden and Stockbridge Roads to CC Construction Inc. of Dennis Mass for an amount not to exceed $1,290,922? Second. Seconded by Mr. Vignani. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Great. Excellent. Second mo uh, second issue, Kev uh, Kevin, you want to address? The second one is Article 4, Item G from the 2009 Annual Town Meeting, and that was an appropriation to clean the cement line, the water pipes, the country way. Um, the borrowing was up to $570,000 for that. Um, we put it out to bid. Um, just as a history, uh, the water line and country way was brought up in this report also as something that should be addressed. Um, it's, it's an older line. Um, we put it up to bid. We had five responsible bidders all place bids on it, and um, I'm pretty happy with the $529,000 bid price that we received on that. Again, questions, Mr. Harris? So, at what point this <coughs> do you clean and reline versus dig it up? And I know if we're doing a sewer project, obviously, kill two birds with one stone, we'll replace the water line like we did on the cliffs and so forth. But at what point do you rely on that report, the age of the pipe, you know? We look at, we look at that report. Mm. The, the overall, one of the things that we look at is the size of the pipe. If it's a 12-inch pipe that's there existing and we can pull what's called a pig through it and clean the line and then cement line it, it's more cost prohibitive than ripping up the whole road. Okay. It, the cleaning lining is expensive inherently. I, I would prefer to replace, replace the line then with, you a know what you duty, have. with a heavier duty line. Um, but we've had good results so far from what we've done at First Parish uh, with the cleaning and lining. Motion? Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for the cleaning and lining of Country Way Water Pipe to N. Grenice and Sons, Inc. of Marblehead, Mass. for an amount not to exceed $529,304.90. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? It's unanimous. Aye. Kevin, thank you very much. Okay, moving on to agenda item number 10, award contracts, chemicals, road salt, sludge hauling, and disposal. And Mr. Banger, you're here Good for this evening, issue. gentlemen. One of the more exciting parts of your evening is about to appear. You're not going to be drinking any samples of those. No items, samples right? today. Okay. Um, but each year, the Department of Public Works uh, goes out and solicits the competitive bids for various materials and services that we use. Uh, this amounts to around uh, 30 items that we go out and bid so that we can get the most attractive price for the town. Many of these contracts are less than the $25,000 um, award limit uh, that you've uh, administered, uh, that the town administrator handles directly. Uh, and the topic that we're going to talk tonight are contracts which are uh, significantly more money and are in your purview to decide upon. The uh, first topic yeah. is road salt. Um, the competitive bids for road salt were duly advertised and opened publicly on June 21st uh, for the supply of road salt to use for the winter uh, snow and ice fighting. Uh, we received uh, four responses for this. Uh, and as you can see before you, the, the prices ranged from $118 a ton to $63.75 per ton. Um, the potential contract is uh, around $175,000 per year, depending upon what the snow conditions are 
Of course, we only buy what we need, um, and we would recommend that you lid, uh, that you award to the low responsible bidder, Eastern Minerals of Weston, Mass, for sixty-three dollars and seventy-four seventy-five cents a ton. You want to do them all at once, Mr. Chairman? Or? Yeah, why, why don't we? Okay. That's Al, can I just ask, if you can just add in each comment, is it more or less than what we typically, just a sense for yep. where that number is uh, this is, a, and this budget. is a little less, this one is a little less than we are paying for this year. 68 last year. Yeah. Um, the Thanks. second topic is for sludge hauling and disposal. Um, we're going to recommend, this is a contract which is around $375,000. Um, for hauling of uh, sludge from the waste treatment plant. Uh, we're recommending a three-year contract to Brian Powers for $95 per wet ton. This is comparable to what we've been paying over the last three years as well. So it's, it's in the right range. The bids range from $156 to down to $95, and we're recommending you award to Brian Powers. Potassium hydroxide is used in water treatment. This is a contract valued at around $150,000, depending upon the quantities used for a one-year contract. We recommend that you will award to the low bidder, Harcross Chemicals, for $3.74.73 per gallon, or essentially $3.75 per gallon. The high, the range was from $4.84 down to $3.75. This is a little less than we paid last year. Sodium hypochlorite for water treatment, a $30,000 contract. Um, we award, would suggest that Harcross Chemicals, again, uh, be the awardee for $29.85 per 15-gallon container. Uh, the range on this was from essentially $38 down to this bid of $29.85. It's uh, comparable to what we're paying in the current year. Sodium hydroxide for water treatment. It's at our <coughs> water treatment plant, a $50,000 contract. Uh, the prices ranged from $1.84 down to $1.19 per gallon. We would like to have you award this to Univar, uh, who uh, was the low bidder at $1.18. 0.95 cents per gallon. Uh, this is less than we've been paying. And the last one is sodium carbonate, which is used in the wastewater treatment plant. Um, this is a $40,000 contract. The uh, four bids came in at uh, $386 per ton, down to the low responsible bidder, Borden and Remington, for $374.94 per ton. And this is comparable to what we're paying this year. Expensive stuff. Mr. Murray. Just a quick question. I noticed the first one for road salt is an annual contract, and the rest are three years. Uh, the, the road salt, all, all of the contracts are one-year contracts except for sludge hauling and disposal. There we're suggesting awarding a three-year contract. Okay, so the... Wait a minute. The other ones are one-year contracts. All right, so we... Wait a minute, your, your motions, which were accurately transcribed in our office for sodium hypochlorite, says up to 2013. So oh, does the sodium what? hydroxide. Uh, I'm sorry, so that, sodium was, carbonate. that was a typographical error on my part. Okay. Okay? So, so if, I could, if I could correct the thinking, then. Sludge hauling is the only one? All contracts are for one year. We will rebid them again next year. Okay. The reason being that those are relatively easy to rebid and to change suppliers on. Okay. And those are, uh, so a number of these are a supplier we might have used two years ago <coughs> and they weren't, didn't award it and then we went back in. So they all, they're very competitive and so we okay. do that every year. So all those motions will be to June so 2011. My, yeah, it was right. my mistake. No problem, thanks. Uh, on the sludge hauling one, it's three years because it's hard to get set up. You know, you, if you're gonna change haulers, or, uh, contractors, as we are in this situation, uh, it, okay. They have to s establish a new stream. There's some licensing and permitting that has to be done. So we o o would like to award that for three years, as we did in the past, and then come back in three years to do it again. Mr. Okay. Harris. Is that disposal and transportation or just transportation, Al? Yes. Disposal and transportation. Is it done in 30-yard roll-offs? I beg your pardon? Is it done on roll-off cans? Or is um, it? No. 
Yes, but we, yes it is. You know, you know what, what I'm trying to say is, can we increase that size, or would that take a renovation at the, at it's, the plant? Uh, it's done by a container that's left on site. Right, I've seen it. Filled up over time. Mm -hmm. Hauled on, rolled up, and then hauled away, and then uh, replaced and put in place. Kevin, we couldn't, you know, and this isn't a discussion for now, but we couldn't increase that down the road? Or is the weight is the weight limit well, I, right I there? I think the problem was turning around in, All right. in around there and okay. it could be weight. Um, yep. I'd have All to right. talk to Bob. Yeah, just was curious when I saw it. All right. And, and actually the uh, the disposal is a more expensive cost than the transportation. I can imagine. So I can this, only imagine. These goodies are not going very far away. Yep. Good. Other questions? Just a comment, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just the Chairman, Mr. Harris brought this up. This is the first time we remember this being given to us like this, so it's nice. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Transparency. We like that. Thanks. Only one other comment is that the majority of these are enterprise funds. The only one that's not in enterprise funds is the SALT. SALT, that's correct. <laughs> that's by coincidence, though. Um, a number of the other areas that we have bid are all in the general ledger area. Uh, they just have to be smaller contracts. Those would be contracts for uh, weed and feed or um, uh, loaning us a Caterpillar tractor or that sort of thing. Okay. Motion, anybody? Just motion, you know the dates. Um, you want a motion? Please. Move the board of select and vote to award the contract for road salt for the period of July 2010 through June 2011 for the low bid of $63.75 per ton to Eastern Minerals West and Mass. Second. Second by Mr. Vignani. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Move the board of select and vote to award the contract for sludge hauling and disposal for a three-year period from July 2010 through June 2013 for the low bid of $95 per ton to Brian Powers, Plimpton, Mass. Second. Second, Second by Mr. Vignani. All, uh, discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contracts for supplies of potassium hydroxide for the period of July 2010 through June 2011 for the low bid of $3.7473 per gallon and sodium hypochlorite for the low bid of $29.85 per 15-gallon container for the period of July 2010 through June 2011 to Harcrow's Chemicals, Nashua, New Hampshire. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to award the contract for a supply of sodium hydroxide for the period of July 2010 through June 2011 for the low bid of one dollar and eighteen ninety-five ten thousandth of a dollar per gallon to Univar USA, Providence, Rhode Island. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Move the Board of Select and vote to award the contract for a supply of sodium carbonate for the period of July 2010 through June 2011 for the low bid of $374.94 per ton to Borden and Remington, Fall River, Mass. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Moving on to Mr. agenda. Chair, can I ask them a quick question before they leave? Sure. It's probably other business, but it'd be quick. Um, I noticed on the 4th of July weekend that at Peggotty Beach, the ice cream truck parks up at the top there, and the, the way that they go up that ramp there at that end of the beach, do you know what I'm talking about, the far end? It's not as, it's different than the way it's been historically, and a lot of these kids are kind of in a dangerous position. I don't know if there was larger rocks there in the past or or whatever, but is there any way to do anything with that? Yeah, the storm of uh, this spring, I think March, um, tore away the rocks and undermined the street, uh, was actually almost exposing water lines. So the uh, we went back in and put in some uh, put in stones to protect that area. Um, I've done some uh, research on what was there before. There, you know, that area has apparently was armored at one time in the past, but the armor stones, which the really large stones, have all gone away. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a continual erosion there. So we have a problem with that area that we need to bring the armory from uh, the base of the cliff around in front of those three or four homes there if we want to, in order to protect the town's infrastructure. It's not to protect private property, but protect public property. Yeah, it's not really, it's so, really up above. Uh, for now, we've posted a sign saying that it's dangerous to scramble over these rocks. Uh, and also, I think we've advised the uh, uh, that truck that he shouldn't park there. Are we going to eventually move the bigger rocks back there? Is that the plan? It's a seawall project. That's called a seawall project. We got a major project there to do. So there is no, there is at some point we will repair that seawall like all other seawalls, but there's no funding. Yeah, I just. What we've done is we've stabilized it from a standpoint of erosion of the road, 
but not from the standpoint of it uh, there isn't pedestrian access over that right but it is being used so it is kind of a, a safety issue for well the people use yes it. true there are many of those where people are walking on areas that are unsafe right so what one thing we're going to do is we do is not have that truck park there because he's a, creating an attractive nuisance attracting children mm -hmm. over the stony bank to his business if, if I may, and I wasn't tending, it, wasn't tending to, the, to bring this up, but, but uh, what's happening there is the, it, it, the, the, the hard work and the expense that we put into the bolstering up that area to protect the uh, road is being eroded. It's just people are just not, and the, and the ice cream truck probably accounts for 2% of the traffic over those roads, over those rocks. If you look now, the rocks are just. People are walking down there from first cliff, second cliff. Uh, access to the beach, you say there is none, or there shouldn't be none. It, uh, it's been there for 50 years, you know what I mean? So it's hard to sell people, you don't have access anymore. So there's the problem. I mean, eventually, another one more year, and you're not gonna have any of that hard work that you put in there. It's all gonna be walked, walked away, not uh, taken away by the ocean, but it's gonna be walked away by people walking down there. So just second what with Tony says, I think something, you know, it, it'll be forever before that seawall is brought out uh, yeah. to what, what, what you're describing there. But there has to be some solution there. Yeah. Were the town to put in stairs or whatever, then we need to make sure we put it, it needs to be handicap accessible. We can no longer build a set of stairs without providing then uh, appropriately yeah. handicap right. ramping. That, so. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're kind of into a, if, it, if we're going to create a pedestrian access across there, then we're in much bigger. I don't think we're going to create it. I think it's there. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's just there. So I don't know if there's any ability to get large rocks in that area so that it's a little bit safer. I mean, that seems like the easy solution, but. Okay, we'll look at it. I mean, I don't. One, one thing, if I may, Mr. Chairman, sure. while you're still here, the, the, uh, Stop sign at Stockbridge and Brook. Very nice, but it was put in the wrong place. It's, it's supposed to be put where the yield sign is. With the okay. Stockbridge and where? It's it's Brooke. Harry Litchfield, right where the old jail was. It's the triangle. Near you know the where is Stockbridge and you know the little parking area is there. As you come down Stockbridge by the park, there's a yield sign. That Kerry Fisher Road or the uh, yeah. Kerry Litchfield. I think it's Kerry yeah. Litchfield Brook and also. Yeah, okay, um, I'll look it's, it's it. not I, th I think what they did is they put the stop, put sign. stop sign at Stockbridge and First Parish. They put another one there, so now you got it's plenty it. of them there. A you got plenty of stop signs now, but they're not. Well, what didn't traffic rules just specify yes. that a, sign a, right? a while ago, and I think it came to the selectman the last. Yeah, the last we voted meeting. it. Yep. I, I, it was just a mistake. I, Someone. I didn't see the slip come in. Yeah, so I think I, what has to be done, simple enough, is, is the the yield yeah. sign has to be taken up. Yield sign, stop sign, put it. Stop sign. Yeah. In a, in a stop. That's all. Uh, I thought that's what was going to happen. Yeah. I yep. wasn't aware they did something. Yeah, was a, thank you, better. thank you. And I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, to jump all right. in. Any other? I would have forgotten. All right, moving on to the next agenda. It's the award the contract of the bucket truck for the DPW. Hey, we're going to. I would like to hold off on this for until your next meeting in August. Uh, we have. We went out for competitive bids to find, to see if we could, actually we were quite creative. Uh, if you remember at the town meeting a year ago, and that would be the April of, o, of 09, uh, the town appropriated or, or authorized the expenditure of $125,000 for a replacement of our bucket truck, which is 40 years old and is literally doesn't pass inspection, hasn't for years. Um, and is used uh, frequently throughout town for uh, street light changing, getting on top of buildings, that sort of thing. Um, we, we looked into how would we go after um, finding a used bucket truck because there's a, certainly a wealth of those in the market as we can tell now. And we've worked with the Attorney General or the IG on coming up with the method for doing it. How do we specify it? We went out and specified that we were looking for a newer used bucket truck that met certain requirements in terms of age, mileage, tire wear, um, size of engine, uh, the equipment that it would, uh, with which it was equipped, um, and required a warranty. Uh, we had some respondents to that. We found a very attractive bucket truck. It was in uh, um, Arizona. 
Our requirement was that the bucket truck be available in Massachusetts for us to inspect. The uh, uh, bidder proposer has brought it up to Massachusetts and Somerville. It just arrived yesterday, and we will send up this week then our mechanics to go inspect and make sure the truck indeed meets our specifications and is uh, acceptable. If that is the case, then we will come back and ask you to approve a purchase of for uh, roughly $70,000 for the purchase of this truck. So we've, it's not quite half price, but it uh, would be a very good truck. So I'm just alerting you to that fact, so I'll come back in three weeks at your next meeting if we find this to be acceptable and ask that you agree to the purchase of this used truck. Well, that takes care of agenda item number 11. How about 11A, which is the award contract of the dump truck with the DPW? 11A, we're prepared for. Um, Article 4, item C and F of the April 12, 2010 annual town meeting authorizes the treasurer, treasurer with the purchase, with the approval of the selectmen to borrow up to $200,000 for the water department to purchase a heavy duty six wheel dump truck and sander for the water department. The water department currently does not have a dump truck. Therefore, any time there's a water break or construction maintenance project, the water department must either rent a <coughs> truck or borrow a truck from the highway department. This, in turn, causes some problems with the highway department because if they're in the middle of an operation and have to switch guys around or move trucks around, um, it basically disrupts everything that they're doing. So this request is to get a strong dump truck for the water department and also to use it as a snow fighter. Um, the breakdown is 150000 for the truck and 50000 for uh, plows, stainless steel sanders, uh, etc. Questions from the board? <coughs> Mr. Harris. So, are you looking for all 200 or 178? Oh, I'm now? sorry. Actually, um, the suggested motion would be move that the Board of Selectmen award the contract to purchase an international six wheel dump and sander to Minuteman Trucks Incorporated Walpole Mass for an amount not to exceed 178,992.45. So moved. Second. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you very Thank much. You, Jim. All right. Now moving on to agenda item number 12. It's a discussion vote for a special events permit, the Duathlon. It's continued from June uh, 8th um, last month for an outdoor entertainment permit. And on behalf of the applicant is uh, Mr. Nico Afonseco. Nico, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'll be Thank candid with you. I was trying to figure out why we were having you again, and then I think it was probably due to the fact that we're dealing with um, the music. Is it the music or the Parkway? I wasn't sure. The uh, what? Sorry. Is it the both. I think both. the the um, yeah the music? It's it's cordoning off the entertainment on uh, Central Park yes. Drive or something. Yeah. Okay. The entertainment. Correct. Um, I believe forwarded you the letter that I wrote, to kind of describing what we're talking about. Um, essentially, uh, last time we came, we approved the duathlon, but what we need to still do is to approve the entertainment during the duathlon, which is going to be a live band, um, essentially that morning playing um, next to the uh, transition area for the event. Uh, we had a live band last year. We actually had uh, a few live bands set up due to the weather. We only had two that ended up playing. Uh, didn't have any problems. Of course, that was a different location. Now with the new location up at the Lawson Tower in Central Park Fields, uh, I wanted to make sure that uh, everybody's clear of what we're doing. Essentially, there'll be a uh, small tent to protect them from weather, as well as to protect the noise uh, behind them. Uh, we're trying to take as many precautions as we can to be respectful to the church. So we're going to be placing the tent, hopefully, to the west side of the driveway of the central park drive itself which would be on the either on the fringe of the grass right next to the pavement or if we can fit it with uh, fire and police specifications on the pavement <coughs> um, just to the east of lawson tower itself down that grassy slope that way it'll be facing away from the church there'll be a tent hopefully with three sides behind them so all the sound will be projected only east across uh, the field across the field correct um, as that's about as simple as it gets. I don't have a name of a band yet, but obviously it's going to be respectful music. There'll be family music, basically rock and roll, pop type stuff. Um, I'm open to any questions from the board. Just the, the time. You s 8 a.m. to is a question mark. Is it 8 to 12? About 8 to 12. Correct. 
I don't think we're actually going to be starting music at 8 o'clock. It'll probably be more like 8.30, but I wanted to make sure that if everybody's set to go and people are arriving, that we can... And that's 8 to noon, not noon. midnight. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think okay. I put PM. Yeah. Yeah, noon. I guess the only, the only problem would be is if you have bad weather. You know, that, that that tent and that activity could ruin the grass area wherever you set it up if it rained a lot. I, I don't believe that it would because essentially we're talking about small bands. They're not putting down any major equipment. Essentially you're looking at a drum kit, four or five guys with guitars. The tent is going to protect the grass. There's not a lot of staking to do with these tents unless there's a, a hurricane like last year. Uh, it's really not going to be an issue. Um, and I have spoken to um, um, rec department about the grass usage. That's actually not field space so unlike the, the concerns we had about usage of the fields and damaging grass we, even in the event that there was some grass to be damaged which i really don't believe would happen it, it's not an area that's of a concern to delay any sort of use of the fields mr vignani oh, i just didn't know if paul sherry had any from rec he's here hey, paul did you want to add anything at all or no i think nicola and i have spoken about this to make sure that we're So it's on the side of the street closer to the building? Closer to the tower. Closer to the tower, right, the building, yeah, okay. We're, right. we're, so we're actually hoping to draw people away from the playing fields as much as possible with all the different things we're doing. Motion. Motion, Mr. Chairman. Please. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the special event permit to the Situate to Athlon for Sunday, October 17, 2010 at the Central Field site, 8 a.m. to 12 noon in accordance with all conditions set up by the Town of Situate. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. And I think um, move, move we need the board a second motion. Yeah. Move board of Selectmen vote to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to the Citrus Duathlon Sunday, October 17, 2010 from 8 a.m. to 12 noon, Central Park Drive and Central Fields to be located up on the other side of the road near Lawson Tower for live amplified music. Applicant must notify all immediate neighbors of this event. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. I just used Mr. Sherry's exact wording on the location on that, so that's why it said up on the other side of the road, because that's what you said. So. Congratulations. Good luck. And as I said to you last time, probably get out before we talk Thank about you. it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Moving on to agenda item number 13. It's a discussion vote, special event permit for heritage days and outdoor entertainment permit. On behalf of the applicant, <coughs> uh, Claudia Oliver, come on up. Good evening. Good evening. Um, so after, after our last meeting that we had in May, but I don't remember exactly when it was. June. June, it was June, okay. We met with the fire chief and the police chief and had a meeting, a quite a round and around meeting about that. But then at the um, suggestion of the police chief, the music is being moved uh, to Otis Street in between Riva and the e import-export building. Mm. So the music and the stage is now off of Front Street and the stage will face the water. Who face the water? Face the water. Um, so. Hmm. Mr. Murray, questions? So just to be very, very clear here, police and fire are, are fine with this? That was my understanding. Tricia, police and fire are fine with this. Okay. Harbor Master, just because that's one of the main ways in and out, and I understand. Well, the the road, um, as you enter the harbor and you take a right at South Coastal Bank yep. into Cole Parkway, that far road up on the outside is still open. All the way to the gazebo and, and beyond. All the way around. Okay. Like it has it always has okay. been. So there is there is that there is access. Way in and out. And that area was never, I mean, was never open to traffic anyway. Gotcha. Uh, during set. the event. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
the so there, there were typically booths in there. Yes. So those are going out on Front Street? Um, most of those booths will go on to Cole Parkway. So along? Some of them may be in Front Street. Okay. And then I saw also that we're going to only have one row of booths. In front of South, CVS. Instead of C, down that instead way. Instead of two rows because right. that is does get pretty congested. Pretty busy. But we're going to have the same number of booths. They're just going to be dispersed differently. Right. Yeah, the, the configuration will be a little right. bit different. And one of the positive is you don't have to break down the stage. It's going to stay that way right. overnight. Yep. Yes. Mr. Norton? No. I, I, so the only, I guess, inconvenience, if that's the right word, would be for people who are looking at the booths, visiting the booths behind, on Cole Parkway. They will not be able, of course, now to go to Front Street via uh, by the movie theater. They will have to go down. Both sidewalks will be open. Oh, they will. So it'll just be the road with a. Okay. So they'll be able to go. They'll be able to. Okay. That answers my question. Thank you. Right. That'll be very congested, though. Yeah. You know, well, but yeah, at least but it, it will is, be passable. Right. Yep. Or, but there are other options. You can right. go. Right, and there, yes. You can go to yeah. the right or to the left and walk around. Okay. And maybe we'll mark them somehow. One of the Road to the Cole Parkway. Um, per our discussion with the police and Mr. Dan, who was there as well, what we will do is put vendors on Front Street. Front Street will be closed, and you have yet to give us the time. I think we're going to open it at 6 o'clock that evening. There won't be a stage, so we can reopen it at 6 both evenings. Um, the stage will stay up. The practice will go away. But what we need is cooperation from the town to ask. And we will put up notices that no one park in Cole Parkway from the Little Grass Islands back. In other words, there are trucks that park there. There's a landscape truck that parks there forever. They all need to park someplace else. Cole Just Parkway back where? From where the roadway where CVS is. Yep. There are three, for lack of a better description, pods. Yep. The music, the entertainment, if you will, the, the kitty rides will be in one. Yep. We're going to put overflow that would have been on Otis into the other two pods, food vendors, et cetera. So they'll be there as well. So what, we're not taking all of the parking from Cole Parkway, but just to where those little islands <coughs> come in. It, it's sort of a natural delineation. Now, is that a request? It is a request. I mean, it's a request you'll be making of people driving trucks and cars. Well, car there's, theoretically, there is no overnight parking for trucks in right. Cole Parkway to begin with. But we're asking for this one particular weekend. Right. But you're not, you're not asking the police to ticket those people or tell them. This is just a please help us out we'll type thing. We'll just have to work okay. around them. No, that's fine. That's fine. Good. I just want to make sure I understood the lay of the land be, on that. It may be very difficult to, to, to police that, yeah. what you're requesting, only because how are we going to stop them? If someone packs in there overnight, we'll say, or packs in there first thing in the morning, who's going to say leave? Yeah, that was my but point. What, two years ago, there was a landscape truck that was parked right in the middle of the hall. Mm -hmm. And he had no, you know, really overnight parking of a truck. He'd been there the entire weekend. It wasn't as if he yeah. didn't get out or he just showed up on Friday morning. He was there for the truck. I guess my question is, well, let, let's the, say the same scenario. He's there again. What are we going to do about it? Nothing. No. We'll okay. work around it. Well, what could we do if there's no overnight parking? What can the police do if he parks overnight? Can they tow the vehicle? You better bring a lot of tow trucks because there's a lot of people packing overnight down there. We'll, we'll, we will put okay. signs, signs and we'll put saw horses and you know we'll start um, a, days before to notify people that we really need this parking. We'll so send we'll Jerry out after him. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I'll talk to Further questions? I'll talk to Motion. Thank you. Further? Please. Uh, move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the Chamber of Commerce request to close Front Street from Beale Place to Allen Street vehicular traffic from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday, August 7, 2010, Sunday, August 8, 2010, in accordance with all conditions set by the, uh, set by the Central Police and Fire Departments. Second. Seconded by Mr. Murray. Discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Is there a second motion? Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant the Situate Chamber of Commerce request for an outdoor entertainment license on Saturday, August 7th, 2010 and Sunday, August 8th, 2010 from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. for amplified music on Otis Place between Riva Restaurant and the Brick Building, Harbor Side of Front Street, um, music to face Cole Parkway and permission to use Cole Parkway. Second. Seconded by Mr. Murray. Before we secure, if I may, just discussion, just, and we said this every year, but I think it's most important this year going forward next year. We really have to have meetings prior to June 1st to discuss this. I mean, I don't foresee any problems, but I'm just saying by this time next year, there should you shouldn't be here. I don't you know think I, mean? I will be. Uh, uh, <laughs> no one should. No one should be here no, getting getting an okay yes, for no, this. Of course, of course. You know, and I think we talk about this every year, but yeah. it never happens. But yeah. it's imperative no, no. Yeah, that because makes perfect sense. next year, may, you know, you may have a real oh. problem if we go into July. My suggestion will be that, um, and as liaison to the board of uh, chamber of commerce, that we should probably put something in the month of October, November. Uh, probably October. That's a good wrap up and discuss right. that, issues. That, there's no reason and, and why that shouldn't happen. Flesh out any outstanding issues so that next year there won't be any discussion at this late day. <coughs> Mr. McMorrow. Since we work on this 12 months a year and uh, we have to get started typically as quickly as uh, late August, it would make sense that we have essential approval as soon as possible. So September and October is something that we can make close on. I'm happy to entertain September. Sooner the better, to be honest. We'll plan on that. Um, if I just, if we could pencil in September at some point, and then uh, I'll raise that issue as an agenda item. Ladies, thank you very much. Thank Congratulations. You, Good luck. All right. Good I don't night. think we voted. I did, I did, did we not vote? I'm no. sorry. Hold on. Don't go anywhere. We got to vote on that <laughs> last motion. Aye. Aye. Who was it? Aye. Seconded and everything. To, we did discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 There you go. Oh, now good. it's official. Oh, boy. Okay, moving on to the next agenda item. It happens to be a uh, discussion formation of 44 Jericho Road, known as Pier 44 Committee. And Tricia. Can I turn this over to you? Uh, sure. In keeping with the vote of town meeting and what we represented at the informational meetings um, before that, uh, as part of the board's uh, acquisition of Pier 44, the board agreed to form a study committee on um, potential uses of the site and or the building. So what you have before you is a draft and it's subject to any input, revision, editing, deletion that you want, but it's just sort of my stab based on a number of different other documents that I cobbled together. I'm going with those professional development conferences um, for you to use as a starting point. Uh, and hopefully it won't be a lot more work so that <coughs> you can move on to the next phase of considering applications at a upcoming meeting for uh, This is more than a staff. <laughs> this is like a direct hit. I, I reviewed it. I thought it was excellent. Um, so I'll open it up to the board for um, any questions, discussion. Mr. Vignani. Um, yeah, very comprehensive. Great, great document. Um, a few things that stuck out to me or the most concerning, uh, let me start. Um, just so people know, it, the suggestion is, is like a nine-person committee. It's an advisory body, as all committees are. They are um, worthy the appointing uh, party, so it's just going to be advising us as to options, and we make the ultimate decision. Um, it's long-term thinking, 20-year 20, 20 project. It's dual phases. I think that's great. Um, the thing that stuck out to me, my biggest concern is the, the dates on it and my concern in us losing any of the MBTA money. Um, the dates for the for the um, um, completion dates are after the date that we think that the MBTA has the cut up for that money. So the only thing I'd like to see is that we get some sort of verification in writing from the MBTA that 
um, if we don't spend the money by October 31st or whatever day the train started running, that it's still available to us. Yes, um, that's an excellent question, and Rick asked the same question of me yesterday, so I contacted Jim Toomey, and I spoke with him this morning, and Jim's recommendation to the board was to immediately send a letter to Mike Boyle at the MBTA, who is the person we negotiated the release of the funds with to purchase the property, indicating that although we don't anticipate actually spending the money by November 1st, it's our anticipation that we will be spending it money on this project or another project that we've identified and we expect to have to exhaust those funds within, you know, when we determine the number 24 to 36 months and would expect that that would be acceptable to, to them. So um, that's what Jim um, will approve. I have to write a draft, run it by him. And so we want to do that to address that. In terms of the dates, I was just thinking in terms of if we wanted to do anything for the April town meeting, March would be the drop dead date. It might end up obviously being a fall town meeting from that or an annual town meeting two years from now. So those dates weren't cast in stone. I just had in my head, in terms of time frames, it's either gonna be in a March or a September if we're ever contemplating town meeting action. That's all that was. Yes. So it could be, so with regard to Mr. Boyle, um, MBTA approval, Essentially, we're just trying to encumber, inform them as to what we're going to be encumbering the, the, the monies for, right. specifically with Pier 44, and also perhaps not naming other potential projects, but saying this type of project or something like that, to, yeah. just and to I get would there. Like to have I would like to be yeah. as specific as possible Correct. in that letter to identify what those are. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because we may not be spending the remainder of these funds on Pier 44. We may still do them for water land acquisition. Right. There's another project Mr. Banger yep. wants to speak with the board about or something else. Yep. But um, I think to communicate sooner that we know we have these funds and that we anticipate to draw them down, we just don't anticipate having them spent to zero November 1. Uh, is something that I think they can Sounds accommodate good. according to. It, my only point on top of that is we need to find that out very, very quickly. Otherwise, we've got to spend the money in the next right. and that's why three months. Sending the letter right away is what Jim recommended. That's great. Just so that Excellent. people, as you mentioned, uh, Tony had said, it's what's being proposed is a nine-member board or committee, um, and it would be called the, the Pier 44 Building Options and Feasibility Study Committee, which would be responsible for assessment, research, analysis, cost estimating, and recommendations to provide for recommended use and uses for a variety of current and foreseeable community, civic, and municipal activities and operations. Uh, the work of the committee would be divided in two different phases. The first phase would be development of a strategic plan outlining the building potential and options for uses. The second was a second phase, a development of a cost estimate that considers the current building conditions, the needs, and any required retrofitting or construction to provide for any recommended uses in phase one, which would either be operations of the, or uses of the building or separate uses. And the time frame for completing phase one would be March 30, I think it was March 10th, was it? Uh, March 1st of 2011. And phase two, which would be October, I think, 1st of 2011. So that kind of is a, a quick summation of what is being proposed and what's being put forth before this board. Um, and as far as the nine members, what's being proposed is that um, Three members uh, would be from the um, Commission on uh, a Council on Aging, the Recreation Department, and the Public Buildings Commission. The remaining six would be appointed by this board, the Board of Selectmen. Kind of in summation, just, what just, it is. just a point. This is uh, a, a suggestion. Correct. Uh, the nine members are a suggestion, and the makeup of the board is a suggestion. The board may want to to, to tweak that. I'm not saying we will, but. There may be reasons to tweak that. So I don't want people to go forward thinking, uh, you know, it's absolutely going to be a nine-member committee and it's going to be made up of, of these nine people. It may not be. And I, I agree with Joe. Nine's a lot bigger Good. number than I want to deal with, but I also want the board to have flexibility in that we also represent and we appoint some citizens yep. at large. Yep. But um, I'm not wed to having a dedicated member of the Council on Aging or Recreation Commission on that. Um, that was just something had come up in the mix of discussion. I do believe very strongly you need to have a member of the Public Building Commission on it. Yes. Um, and clearly, as I ent indicated in the preface, to have really what should drive your appointments is the talent of the individuals 
in terms of architecture, building, building adaption, pe people who've done it before. Um, but as Joe noted, you know, this isn't being presented to you as a fait accompli. I think it's going to be a lot of work for the staff, too, because um, this is a committee that should meet regularly, I think. And uh, although not on a fast track, um, I don't think we'll working up against a, a deadline that needs to be met. I mean, I'm more interested in the work being done thoroughly and that they have the tools and resources to do what we're asking them to produce. And, and the other thing to remember is, regardless of the number of persons on the committee, their meetings will obviously be all open public meetings and anybody, and they'll be announced and everybody and anybody will be able to attend and participate in the discussion, so. Um, um, no. I, I agree. I've been kind of silent on this issue for a long time, and I have to say I really echo what you're saying, which is I want this committee to be very thorough, and it's not a rush to getting it done quickly. It's got to actually be well thought out. So what I would suggest, but it's up to how the board wants to go forward, I think if we can either address this now, go through it, I think instead of finalizing it tonight, I'd say then let's put it back on the agenda for the next meeting, one of the first agenda items to finalize it and get it together so that we can, you know, um, if there are any uh, revisions or suggested revisions, we just kind of uh, take a look at it and then vet it out at the next meeting, get it charged, get it done, put it out to the public, and then say, you know, we'd like to have applications for people who would like to be involved. And then set up in August, um, meet applicants who are interested. Um, you know, I, I don't want to do it for one meeting. Personally, I don't want it for one meeting because people are away. August is a difficult month because it's the middle of the summer and then have them come in at least twice and if they're interested and they can't make it then maybe do a third the beginning of September and then put the committee together and go forward but that's kind of what I'm looking at I won't be here at the next meeting I believe that's the third of August yes yes so if you finalize the charge at your August meeting maybe you could do the appointment process in the fall, fall. Where everybody's back from the summer it's and you might September. want to actually have them fill out some sort of questions as well so you have a, a balanced uh, how does the board feel Sounds good good yeah all right. dependent on the money and my if you don't get that thing signed then I think we have to proceed mm -hmm. with it much quicker because November 1st is the I'll do that draft this week and circulate it through John. Yeah, I, I, I agree, Tony, and, and, and I think we all feel. I mean, uh, my feeling is is that I want confirmation in the MBTA that um, whether we have suggested earmark its funds for this project, other projects, I want them to say in writing that they are going to honor it. I don't want them to acknowledge the fact that we sent a letter. Otherwise, uh, this board has to act between now and um, November 1st. So it's, it's kind of like I think we need to be pursuing this is going to take much longer this project but I think the, the the ideal here is there are other issues other projects that we're going to be addressing that we can't discuss uh, in public for obvious reasons for acquisition but um, which is a, um, a open meeting issue having said that um, we are addressing that and so um, it just but just to remind people given the discussions before the town meeting vote we do have MBTA approval for spending this money for the Pier 44, obviously, because we closed on it and all that sort of stuff. We're just talking about any potential balance that may or may not be left over in that fund right. and we have after that money in hand. what we do. And we, we have the money in hand. We take it back. It's not right. a right. member of them not giving right. it us. We don't want them to take it. Yeah, so we're, we're good. I think, and Mr. Denny, I think that's a, a fine plan for uh, implementing this and getting the public involved and let the word go forth, people send in applications and all that stuff. It's great. Other questions from the audience? Questions from the board? Fair enough. All right. Moving on. Uh, we're going on to item agenda item number 15. It's an annual appointment process. Motion. Please. Move the board select and reappoint Pamela Davis to the Council on Aging. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations. Aye. <laughs> Move the selectman reappoint Mary Sansonito as assistant town accountant contingent upon continued satisfactory performance in accordance with her FY11 goals and objectives. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Move the Board of Selectmen reappoint Gary Carlo as the agent of veterans' benefits and custodian of veterans' graves upon continued satisfactory performance in accordance with his FY11 goals and objectives. Second. Seconded by Mr. Vignani. Discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Let's move on to agenda item number 16, which is the Town Administrator's Report. Tricia. 
Thank you. Um, just a couple of quick updates for the board. Um, as you may or may not be aware, the open meeting law changes went into effect um, July 1st. We had hoped that they would be delayed by the legislature till November 1st. That did not happen. So uh, Town Clerk Bernice Brown and I have sent out some notifications. Bernice has actually put together a very comprehensive uh, compendium of um, not only these changes, but the conflict of interest law changes that are up on the home page of the town's website for people to look at. Uh, Bernice and Chief Stewart and I spent some time last <coughs> week determining where the outside 24-7 HP accessible bulletin board will go um, because we need to provide that um, outside the building and we can hope to provide those notices inside the foyer of the police department. Um, but the space there actually is quite limited to do the amount of new postings we're going to get in addition to the regular postings we always used to get. There is a notebook over there right now, and it lists all the postings and agendas. It's updated twice a day, and there's also one in the um, town clerk's office. The fire department has graciously um, volunteered to build the bulletin board. Um, we have some talented folks over there. So um, you'll see it at some point, but in the interim, we're meeting the requirements of the law by having that over in the police department. Um, FY10 transfers and reserve funds, as I had told you um, at the last meeting, you'd probably be changing what I had you vote, um, and indeed you do. And Kim has, uh, did you give them the handout already on the transfers? Yes. So you have that. In the motion that I've provided in my report, there's two typos. It says FY11 in the motion. That should be FY10. And it also says dated July 8th. And since I had to update it again this afternoon, it should be dated July 13th. So um, there's only two main changes from what the board uh, approved June 22nd. One was an additional legal bill that came in today from our prior Labor Council for services performed July to November of last year. And the second was uh, for additional personnel services costs relative to overtime in the DPW. Uh, one of the things that we're working on, and I think I've corrected for FY11, is all these special events that the board approves the DPW has to hire people on the weekends on an overtime rate to clean up trash, and there's no appropriation in their budget or provide saw horses or address any problems. Um, can unlike the police department, who the chief can say you need eight details and then just bills accordingly. Um, so that is partly due to some of the shortfall that you have for June 30th that you're approving. Can we charge the event organizers? On the go forward for FY. 11, we researched uh, with the town accountant and the DPW can do exactly what the police department does and charge event organizers for the cost of their time. So we've started doing that July 1 and the event organizers are notified. Good, but, excellent. Um, special events do tax the town services and we only charge $100 for the event processing and a lot of that is waived because if it benefits a town department, we waive it. So we're getting a little better each year, sort of tweaking it, but those are the two new transfers that you saw. Do you want the motion now? It probably fits. So I'd like to move. Move the Board of Selectmen rescind its prior approval on June 22, 2010 of fiscal year 10 budget transfers and reserve fund requests and in its place approve the attached revised listing of fiscal year 2010 budget transfers and reserve fund, reserve fund requests dated July 13th, 2010. Second. Seconded by Mr. Murray. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And I should note that the Aye. advisory committee met at six o'clock this evening and approved all of these as well. So we can officially close July 15th. Uh, for FY10. It's still a little bit of balance in the reserve fund. So, um, that's that. Um, 
I sent you folks an email on this, I think, when the revised uh, final numbers came from the legislature. The governor's finally approved the budget, and I have on average a 4% reduction to our local aid. Um, but with the assessments and reimbursements on the cherry sheet, it's actually about 6% to us, and a, we have a deficit right now of 20613 But um, not fatal. We can certainly address that. Good job to the forecasting committee. Yeah. <laughs> and the chair of that committee. Yeah, we, we did pretty well, didn't yeah. we? We dug in. <laughs> <laughs> um, just news you can use, which I haven't done for a while. I really want to commend the police department for the 4th of July work. All officers are on deck for the 4th of July, as you know. Um, we increased enforcement considerably about fireworks. Uh, people had neighborhood fireworks, but the commercial use of fireworks apparently all went to Marshfield this year, and um, I'm, I'm very pleased with the response there. Um, some of the increased enforcement at the spit, we believe, has displaced itself to the town beaches. We've seen noticeable incidents at some of them, um, but again, um, the police department's aware of it. We've spoken with recreation, and I think we have a good handle on that. And um, I want to particularly note the um, efforts of the lifeguards during the 4th of July weekend, whereas I know here it was brought to my attention there was three rather significant incidents where um, the lifeguards responded uh, upstanding. And one of the actual scenarios that they had trained for the week before happened, the 4th of July weekend. So um, I think the town has a lot to be proud of in that regard. And, um, Last is, um, as I said, I've been here a year next Tuesday, and I just want to thank all of you individually um, for your support, the members of boards and committees, my staff, department heads, and um, more importantly than anybody, Sheila and Kim, who um, really, um, I think, are two gems that most people don't realize in the town in terms of their work. So I'd like to personally thank you. Thank you. That's it. John, can I just jump in? Please. You know, I read that, Tricia, and you shouldn't be thanking us. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Sheila. Absolutely. But we should be thanking you. I mean, right from the get-go, you, you're here six or seven days a week putting in all kinds of hours. You really have done just about what every one of us thought you'd do, and that was jump in with both feet. And Thank you. Don't thank us. We're very I'm lucky to have you. still not worried about the commuting. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. We were never worried. <laughs> Just, uh, if I could follow up on, on, on yeah. Sean, I was going to save this for other business. It was probably more apropos now. I think of our last meeting, and sometimes things like this go uh, unnoticed sometimes, not by us maybe, but the last meeting, Trisha announced over $100,000 in savings through a, a renegotiation of a contract insurance and some personnel changes. And that hundred thousand dollars or sixty six thousand dollars or two thirds of it goes to the school department. And of course the other uh, thirty three uh, thousand dollars goes to us. This is being done constantly in one way or another. And and I think that just has to be mentioned, brought forward that it's things like this that allow us to to keep an additional teacher uh, offer another service to the town. So this was just an appropriate time to bring that up. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Tricia. Thank Absolutely. you, Tricia. One year. Good job. Okay, moving on to the next agenda item, um, which is other business. Looking around, do I see any other business? Mr. Murray? As usual, I have none, Mr. Danny. Uh, Mr. Vignani. I have a... Two quick things. Um, first one is um, a couple of people have mentioned trash cans at the beaches that they get overflowing by by Sunday. I don't know if we have extra ones that we can throw at the entrances of Peggotty and um, some of the other spots. If there's some lying around, the, you know, obviously people just lay it next to it if it's if it's full. So um, if we can just provide extra ones. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of it isn't from the beachgoers. All right. Yeah, whoever. Um, and the other thing I wanted to bring up, I, I sent an email and um, wanted to talk about it, uh, about the backstops at um, at Gates. 
um, adding fencing there for protective for, for uh, that, that field is getting a lot more use from older kids now and there's been two or three safety issues. Um, the board has brought it before REC. Um, REC has talked about it and, and um, I think they sent an email to Al and to you guys and I just wanted to find out um, what the process would be to move forward with this so we can actually get it in place this year um, you know, to stave off some sort of injury there. Um, to one, one second. Tony, yeah. I was at the meeting, yeah. and I did just what was asked, all right? The next morning, I got in touch with Tricia through Jennifer. I asked Tricia to call Jennifer, which she did, and I gave him the answer that night. You know, I just... Oh, yeah. No. My, my point is, um, if we wait another month to do anything on it, the season's going to be over. Oh, I, I, yeah. I agree. I just, you know, I, I acted right on it, asked Tricia, and Tricia talked to Al, and Paul was at that meeting. And oh, no, yeah. So I just want to know what the next step would be to getting something installed quickly. Well, the next step is to meet with all the players, and I've asked Jennifer to schedule a meeting with Al, her, and um, the contact person at the Little League to discuss what our options are. Okay. So the board won't have to approve anything? At this point, um, in all candor, I don't have enough information to tell you what the next step is. I hope I told Jennifer to set the meeting up um, early next week. And I think it's going to be like an early morning meeting at 8 a.m. since that works better for the gentleman. I don't know his name for Little League. Probably Dan Fem here. See, you know, they're in immediate need to do something as far as short-term, long-term. There's a matter of the appropriation, whatever. But I think, you know, talking to various board members as well as other folks involved, you know, um, everybody wants to be supportive and concerned. It's just we need to do some more information gathering before we, you know, move forward. Okay. Well, I, I made a few phone calls because we last year we did this over at um, Central, Field. Central Field for the softball games over there. Um, to install something similar to what they have there costs like $1,200. Um, I got called three different fence places. So we're not talking about a lot of money. Um, so hopefully we can get it done right, and get it in place. I don't disagree with you, but you know we've been provided with a figure of eight thousand. So right. I'm particularly interested is what is a possible band-aid or quick fix right away for the season, and right. you know how we move forward in terms of who does what and under what circumstances. Right. And like I said, I, I asked Jennifer to schedule that. Yeah. Meeting. But yeah, my only concern was we don't meet again until August third. So if we have to do something for it, then yeah. it's not going to happen before the games. Are over this year. I don't anticipate that meeting to happen. Hopefully, especially if we can do some interim. Thing. Great. Any other business? Just one thing, Al. Speaking uh, of the beaches, was brought to my attention that the portable toilet at Peggy, I guess, has disappeared. I don't know how those disappear, but they end up in dorm rooms. Yeah, and and, and along those lines. Uh, Thanks to the DPW after the busy July 4th weekend, uh, they were down there before 7 o'clock cleaning it up. So by the time people arrived early morning uh, on the Saturday and Sunday and Monday, the beach was clean. So they, I don't know how they got down there so early and cleaned it, but they did. They pulled away 16 dumpsters of trash. Yeah, yeah. It's just a shame that they have to do that, that people are so irresponsible but I suppose that's yeah so my if you pass that on would appreciate it thank you anything else just one quick thing that Joe brought to mind is the whole 4th of July event that was wonderful uh, good turnout very hot um, great to hear the general talk and uh, and all the other uh, speakers that were there and the flyover you know really um, was impressive and, and had all the kids who went and on so uh, Gary and everybody that put that that event together, it was spectacular. And to that point, the other one was Stephen Litchfield, who had actually built the stage right. and did it, uh, donated his time, the materials. He did a phenomenal job building a stage that you know, I wish, I think he's got it. We maybe can use it for Memorial Day, but uh, kudos to him. He, he went beyond the call of duty, so to speak. Outside of that, moving on to the next agenda item, which happens to be correspondence. And I think we have one letter. One here. I'm going to read it, please. Um, on behalf, uh, this is from Martha Verdone, uh, president of Copeland Family Foundation, and this is from uh, Chief Stewart, police chief. 
On behalf of the Situate Police Department, I want to express our sincere thanks for your generous gift of $5,000 for our D.A.R.E. program. Our D.A.R.E. program is entering its 22nd year. As in the past, your donation will be used to continue a program that includes D.A.R.E. curriculum and various D.A.R.E.-related after-school programs and field trips. Again, many thanks for your generous support over the years. Again, this is for the Copeland Family Foundation, um, and we really appreciate their $5,000 donation. Anything else? Moving on into the next agenda item, which happens to be number 19. It's consideration, purchase, exchange, lease, value of real property, and labor negotiations. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going into executive session. It's going into executive session because if we were to discuss the material upon which we are going to be looking into, it would have a detrimental effect. So accordingly, pursuant to the open meeting laws, we will motion and move into executive session. So moved. By Mr. Harris. Roll call vote. Aye. 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 Yes. Thank you, folks. Good night. Good night, Bill.